Today I'm going to show you how to install an HD in a laptop. To access the hard drives, you'll need to open up the service compartment of your laptop. On this Acer laptop, it's located here. They may be located on different places on different laptops and some laptops, like small laptops, doesn't have a service compartment. In that case, you'll need to open up the entire back case of the computer, which means remove all the screws. There we have the last one. And we can now carefully pry this open here. Like that. And we can put it to the side. Here we have the empty hard drive compartment. Now this computer already uses an SSD, an M.2 drive right here. Uh, but we will of course input a, another hard drive into this system right here. So um, here we have the hard drive of choice and we're going to install it there. If you'll just insert it, you will kind of see that um, while we can have it here, it's kind of a little bit loose like this and that is absolutely not acceptable. This is a little uh, tray that we can put the drive in and it will put it more securely inside this space. So we will put our hard drive into this one. Right, take the little tray and put the drive securely in it. Then we'll have four screws. So just fasten all of the four screws like this and I'll do the rest of them like that. You may buy these little trays from a hardware store online or even you can recycle them from an old laptop, like I did for this one, for example. And now we have this little tray, connect it up like that, and push it down. And now you can see it uh, lays much more securely, but even though I have this little tray, it's not perfect, uh, but it's better. So I'm going to complement with my little foam here, like that. So we have uh, much less chance of it's actually disconnecting itself if the computer takes a hit. Now we may just uh, put back this panel, um, put the screws in again and uh, we are done with inserting this hard drive. When your computer starts it will display a key you need to press to start a BIOS. It's usually F12, Escape, F9, F2, depends on the system. You see it on screen and click on it several times until you get to BIOS. The BIOS looks differently dependent on the brand. You wanna look for something called boot and click that. Down below, you see the different instructions on how to navigate on your BIOS version. To get to boot. And inside of here, I can use different keys to reorder this list. It will start with the one on top. If you boot from the wrong drive after installing a new drive, you simply need to change the order these are in. So right now, it's this one is the highest and that's correct, so it will start booting from it. However, if for example, the one you wanna boot from, the drive you wanna boot from is on six, you'll need to move that to number one on the list. Otherwise, it will not boot from the right drive. When you have reordered your list to satisfaction, go to exit and save changes. Your computer should now boot successfully. When you have booted into your Windows system, you just right click the flag and select disk management or search for disk management. Inside of here, you can browse the different disks, you can right click them and also see open. And if you open it, you can basically explore the disks and check around. You can also find this list via this computer and you can browse around and see which disk is which. All right, so here you can see, uh, we get this little prompt, initialize disk. Um, and if you get this little prompt, you of course need to select something. Now, MBR is pretty ancient. GPT is the kind of new one and is uh, required for most new drives. But if you're gonna use this on a really old uh, Windows system, you might change it to MBR, but generally GPT is the way to go for basically everyone. So just select OK. To reuse this old drive and basically make it useful in other systems, we of course need to clear it of stuff. 
So we're just going to click delete volume and make sure that you have backed up anything you want to keep there and that you select the right drive because that stuff will be gone. You get a pop up that it's open in File Explorer because it is. Uh, so basically you will just click yes, but make sure this is really the drive you want to delete. And now it's gone. Now you can see it's unallocated there under disk one. However, there are two more partitions. So we'll just right click and remove them too. Unfortunately, you cannot remove the recovery partition if you have one of those here. So you will need to go into PowerShell Admin by right clicking the Windows flag and selecting it. See from the list that we are working with disk one. Keep that in mind. Write in disk part to launch the program we're going to use here. And now you will write in list disk to list the different disks. Now, as you can see from the list before, we're working with disk one in this particular case. So write in select disk one. After you have done that, you will need to write in list part to list the partitions. There is only one partition available. So you will write in select part one. Now you will write in delete part override. And here, did you catch that? It's now gone. You can delete any partition with this method too, by the way. Hover over the unallocated space and right click and select new simple volume. Beautiful. Here is the manager, click next. And here we can see what size you wanna make it. If this is a hard drive, put this to max. You don't wanna waste any space. If this is a solid state drive, an SSD, remove 10 to 5% from that. Select a letter that it will be called in Windows uh, file menu and select something that you don't use currently uh, so that you will not confuse yourself. Uh, in any case, I'll just uh, go down here and select X. So uh, now you can see here, uh, you don't need to do anything with these two and just click next. Here you can see we need to select NTFS or XFAT. XFAT is better if you use uh, some Mac OS with this drive too or something like that. But for Windows drive, it should be NTFS. Write in whatever you want this to be called. This is X files. And under allocation unit size, if you're only gonna store big files on here, well, then you can select um, 64K or the other Macs and it will be a little bit faster in search, good for movies. Perform a quick format if you want this to be quick and uncheck this if you want to give this drive away because that will encrypt anything that was on it previously. Um, if you do the quick format, it will be very instant, but you can actually restore some files that are deleted. So if you're gonna give this away, you'd really want to do the slow format. So don't check uh, fast format in that case. In any case, now you can use this uh, X files uh, as normal, you can use it to store stuff, you can install Steam games on here or whatever. You know, it's very simple. And that's actually all there is to it. You should probably check out this video, which I think you would like. And if not, do leave a like and stay tuned for future videos, because there will come a video that you will like. And of course, do check out our merch. Links in description if you want to get some cool Zoomodism gear going on there. Any case. Thanks a lot for tuning in and I'll see you next time. This is your host Jim Odesen, signing out.